Welcome back aliens, my name is Davin Reddy and let's continue this series on JavaScript. So in the earlier videos we have talked about how to write a JavaScript code, we have seen how to write variables, how to work with constants. It's time to understand one of the most important concepts in a language which is data types. Now why it is important? As I mentioned before, the most important thing in any software is data, right? Because most of the application we built, we build it for the data, to store it, to process it, to make something meaningful out of it. Maybe if you want to create a graph, if you want to make a game as well, it's all about data, right? Now, when, when you're talking about data, it's, it's also important to understand the type of it. Now, what I mean by type, if you remember in the earlier videos, we have talked about we can add two numbers, right? And then we can do those things, we can add them, we can find something specific about the data based on their type. Example, let me take a variable here and we'll name that variable as data and let's say the value of data is 8 okay now this is a variable right we, we know about it and this is our value now this value will have a type now if you are coming from other language where you define variables and you also mention the type of it here in this case we assign the type to a value now this value here is of type number right okay so that means we can have a number type what about let's say I want to store my name here. So in this case, I can say let user equal to, I can even have my name here. Now this thing is a string. So let's say if you talk about text, we can call it as string type. So this is what we call as types. So this data here represents a type. Now in JavaScript, basically you can divide this type into two categories. So you can divide data types into two parts. First is primitive and second is object. We will not be talking about everything in this video. There is something which we'll see later, of course, because we have not seen the advanced part yet. And if I talk about those things now, you might get confused. So we'll go step by step. So basically, the type is divided into two parts. One is primitive and one is object. So in primitive, we have number, string, boolean, null, undefined, and symbol. Now symbol is something which came recently. So we'll not be talking about much about that in this video. We'll talk about the numbers, we'll talk about string, boolean, null, and undefined. Now, whatever is not primitive. So example, if you have a value which is not a number, which is not a string, which is not a null or undefined, it's an object, okay? So it's a very complex topic to understand the object part. Complex at this point. Once you go ahead, once you understand the basics, it's very easy, trust me. You know, I always follow this line said by someone very famous. I don't recall, but the statement is, Nothing is difficult, it's just unfamiliar. So you just have to get familiar with the language and it's very easy. Okay, so let's start with numbers. Now numbers are numbers, right? So whenever you have a number, let's say 8, 5, 15, any big number doesn't matter, it's a number. Uh, so in this case, I will go for a bigger number now. So I will say num1 equal to a very big number. Let's say this is a, this is a very big number. Now with this big number, you can perform any operation. And that's the logic behind numbers, right? We calculate, we perform operations. Maybe you want to multiply, subtract, you want to find the percentage. Whatever operation you want to achieve, you can achieve that with the help of a number type. So what operation I'm talking about? So I will simply say num1 into. So whatever variable you have, I can perform operation. Let's say I want to multiply that number with 25. Now the only problem is how do you verify if this is correct? Okay, let's try this. Let's see what happens. So I will go to my terminal and here I will say, first of all, I will say CLS so that I will get empty and I will run this. So I will say node first dot JS. And when you say enter, you can see we got the output. The only problem is difficult to verify, but then it says 25 into 25, it's 125 at the end. Uh, we can trust that number. So you can use calculator as well, but this, this works. But then how long this number can be? There should be a range, right? Now on the screen, this is a range with a number. You can have any big number of this range, right? And mind you, it's a power of 10. So this is a length you can work with. But the only problem is if you have a bigger number, a very big number, it might have some inconsistency with the numbers. So the safe integer range or safe number range is this. If you have your number between these numbers, then you will not be having any issues of data consistency or number consistencies. But then you'll be thinking, hey, what about if you have a number bigger than that? In that case, we have a very special subtype of number which is called big int. Big int was not there in JavaScript from earlier stage, it came later. And that's why in most of the project you still work with normal numbers. But yeah, we'll talk about big int as well. Okay, 
So you got this number, right? And we are able to work with it. But what if you have a decimal point here? So what if I say a big number dot eight, will this work? Now this type of numbers in number system is called floating point representation. So when you have a decimal number, we say floating point. So let's say 7.8 just to make it simple. And if I go back here and if I run this call, you can see we got 7.8. Now, is it a normal number? Yes. So this is a number. So by default, all the numbers are represented in floating point. So even if you say seven, it's seven points that you can imagine. So 7.8 also works. There's one more operator which we're going to talk about. So what if you want to know the type of a uh, value. So example, when I said, this is a number, this is a string. What if I want to know the type in the output? So there's a special operator called type of. So let's use type of here. So we'll say type of, it's an operator and you just have to pass a number. So mention the operator name and the variable name. So type of the variable name num1 and let's see what happens. So if you're on this code, you can see it says number. The same thing you can do with user. Now, if you look at user here, it's a string, right? And now, uh, I hope I have saved it. So if you run this code now, you can see we got string. Same thing can be done with any other type which you have. Even floating point representation is a number. Now in this number, you can also store some other type of data. I'm not sure if you know about this, there are different base number system. We have base 10. So whatever number we use is a base 10 number system. We can also go for binary, we can go for octal number system, or we can even go for hexadecimal. So let me show you hexadecimal, how that works. So let's say I have number. Now where can you find hexadecimal? So if you have done work on HTML, CSS, we specify the color code, right? And we specify that with the help of hexadecimal, F, 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 or maybe 0, 0, 0, 0, or 0, A, O, F. So we do that, right? Example here, I want to represent the number with the help of hexadecimal. The way you can represent that is by specifying 0 first. So say, say 0 and say X. Now, whatever you mention after this will be a hexadecimal number. Example, I want to say F. So F is actually 15, the last number in hexadecimal. And let me just print the number as it is. So I will print num1. And let's see what's the output you are getting. So we got 15, this is working. What if you say FF? Now this is 255. So you can see the calculation, so this is 255. In fact, there's one more thing with the number system. You can actually represent floating point with the help of E exponential. Example, when I say 1.5 E, let's say 12. Now this is actually exponential. You can also represent this and you can print and you can see we got the value. So this is the exponential. So it is 1.5 into 10 raised to 12. And there's the output you got, simple. We can actually have one more fun here. You know, I have this problem. I don't know if you have this issue. So whenever I type uh, amount, so let's say if I want to transfer 1000 rupees. So 1000 is easy because we have only three zeros. What if you want to transfer one lakh rupees? In that case, you mentioned five zeros, right? And you verify it 10 times. Do I have exactly have five zeros or, what if you have a very big number? So let's say you have seven zeros or eight zeros. I'm not even sure how many zeros we have on the screen now. So do one thing, go pause the video and comment how many zeros you can see. I don't think only I have that issue and that's why we got a new feature, not a new feature, but you can put underscores in between numbers so that you can differentiate it and is it read, right? So now it says one, two, three, four, four okay, seven, there are seven numbers, seven zeros there. Only underscore, yes, you can't use comma there, okay? The way you do it in real world, you can't use comma because comma has a special meaning in JavaScript. Okay, this is working. The other thing you can also do is you can work with infinity. Right, it's a type of number again. See, number is actually a very big topic, so we are focusing more on that. So let's say five divided by, and we all know, whenever you divide a number by zero, what you get is infinity. But do you really get infinity or do you get some weird answer in JavaScript, let's see. So if you run this code, we literally got a type which is infinity. So infinity is a type of number, you can subtype. Okay, what do you think if I divide a negative number by zero? What do you think what will happen? So basically we have a range of positive infinity and negative infinity. So you can see if you divide negative number by zero, it will give you negative infinity. I mean, not just this, you actually have a maximum value in the number system, right? So I can say number. So we have a special interface called number. We'll talk about that in detail later, what this number means. But imagine this represents a number. So when you say number dot max value, so this is a maximum value you have, which you can use. And let's print this and let's see what happens. So when you run this code, this is a big number, remember? This is something we, we have seen earlier, bigger range. Now, if you have a bigger number and if you say plus 10, Let's see what happens. Plus 10 should work, I guess. Let's say multiply by 10. So the maximum value, multiply by 10. And if you run this code, you can see we got infinity. So whenever you go beyond a maximum value, you get infinity. Same thing can be done for the negative infinity if you want to go with. 
Maybe you can try min value and divide by 10. So that should work. Okay, enough of fun with uh, numbers. There is one more, one last. What if you have a very big number you want to represent? Example here, I have a very big number. I'm not sure if this is a really big number which will not be supported by our script. I don't even know how many five zeros I'm typing there. I just want to print you now one. And sometimes you learn by doing stuff, right? So let's do it, let's try. And oh, it's working. So it does support this big number. Anyway, so you can try big and bigger numbers here. What's important is, if you have a bigger integer and if you don't want to lose any precision example i guess i'm losing precision here if i say one at the end i run can you see that we are actually losing data it says a number and then 10 raised to 24. we don't want that what we want is we want one as well so i can also represent this number with the help of big n so just give a n at the end and this will represent it as it is so this is big n a special type where you can have a bigger number so just say n at the end. The only caveat here is if you add this number by any other number, let's say 2, what do you think? What will happen? This will give you an error. Why is because it says, okay, as I mentioned before, it's very important to understand the errors, right? So it says cannot mix big int and other types. Oh, this is big integer, now 1, and this is a normal number. So in this case, if you want to perform the operation, you can simply say 2n. Again, we'll talk about how do you convert this. Maybe you can convert this 2 into a big integer, or maybe you can convert this number into a normal number. So this option of type conversion, we will talk about that in a separate video. Okay, as of now, this is working. So you can see we got 53 at the end. So that's how you can work with big int. Okay, this is working properly. Now, I know there are some curious minds. They want to know what is happening behind the scene, how everything is working behind the scene. We'll talk about that in a separate video. As I mentioned before, we are here to learn JavaScript from start to end. So somewhere in between, once you know the basics, we'll go with the advanced part where we'll know how things are happening behind the scene. Very important, right? So basically, we have talked about the data type. So we have two categories. We have primitive and we have object, out of which in primitive, we have talked only about numbers. In the next video, we'll talk about the other remaining parts. So I hope you are enjoying. Let me know in the comment section and do subscribe for further videos. Bye-bye.